Hi, I'm Mike Astrakhan. Today I'm going to do an airbrush color portrait using the value system. The value system is an academic method, traditionally used for oil painting. Here, I've adapted it to airbrushing to produce a highly realistic portraiture for t-shirts or canvas. My palette consists of black and white and seven flesh tones in between them. These flesh tones are known as values. Value means the relative lightness or darkness of an object. White is the lightest value. It reflects 100% of the light. Black is the darkest value. It reflects zero light, no light. So I have my flesh tones bottled at high light, which reflects a lot of light. It's almost as light as white. Lightest light, a little darker, middle light, low light, half tone, which is the bridge between light and shadow. Shadow, I have my shadow value bottled at an average shadow value, dark shadow, and black. I mix these uh, flesh tones using various degrees of white, tinting black, brown, dark brown, red, and golden yellow. To illustrate this idea, I have a white styrofoam ball. It's illuminated by a light, so it has a strong light source, and it has a strong shadow on it. To paint this, I would start with lightest light. Where light first strikes an object, it's the lightest. And as it flows down the object, it gets darker. So I'd start with lightest light. Then I would go to middle light, around here. And then low light, just around the edge of the light area. Then right before the light turns into shadow, I would use my half tone. And then as I move into shadow, I would, of course, use shadow. So let me show you how I would paint this. I'm going to illustrate this idea by painting a sphere. The direction of the light is, follows the direction of the arrow here. And when the light strikes first, it's the lightest. So I'm spraying with my lightest light. And remember how I told you how light flows over forms. So where it hits first, it's the lightest. And then where it hits next, it gets a little darker. So I use my middle light as it starts to flow down the form. If you get this correct, your, your um, interplay between light and shadow, you'll create a really nice form, three-dimensional form. So next, clean up my airbrush. And paint in the low light. Notice how I paint these lights in bands similar to the way that light actually flows and having nice transitions between them. You don't want to see any lines, straight lines in there. So having good airbrush control is a must for being able to do this. And now the shadow. The sound you hear is my compressor outside. The shadow sits on its own. It's not part of the light. It's separate from the light. You want to maintain that separateness. It doesn't blend in. The only blending is done with the half tone, and that should be kept fairly soft. The half tone is the transition between light and shadow. It turns the form into the shadow. Now notice how I haven't used any black or white on this. If I was going to cast a shadow off of here, I would cast it against, away from the light. And the only black would be right where no light reaches. Right in there. And the highlight would go right in the center of the lettuce light. You can use the highlight value, and if that's not light enough, 
you could push your highlight with white. And you have a nice three-dimensional form. And this is the way I treat all my portraits. I analyze where the light is coming from, and then I paint the portrait this exact same way. Now let me show you how the sphere translates into a finished portrait. Again, the light is coming from this side. It strikes here first. This is the lightest area. As the light flows down the form, it gets a little darker. Middle light, low light, half tone, and shadow. It's all held by that idea. I projected this image of Patrick Stewart onto a t-shirt using an opaque projector and drawing using a Stabilo All pencil. When I drew the picture onto the t-shirt, I made sure I marked where the shadows are and where the landmarks of the face are so I have my proportions all down before I start painting. This technique of painting is perfect for t-shirts. It's also great for fine art, illustration, really any artistic application you want to use because it's based in sound artistic language. Now I'm going to start painting using my lightest light where the light strikes first. Keep it light, don't want to go too heavy with it, and keep it broad. This technique is also really good because you don't start with the details, but you get right at the painting and you're, you're covering a lot of surface very quickly. So you can see your progress. Now I'm going to move down the face with the middle light, where the light hits next. I'm spraying very heavy here, and normally I would wear a mask. But since I have to talk, I don't want to talk through a mask. But it's very important to wear a mask and protect your lungs. And I'm painting this just the same way I painted the ball. The lightest light first. Now I'm working with the middle light still. And I'm not worrying about overspray off to the side here because I'm going to paint in a dark background. And that'll cover it. Now I'm going to do the bottom of it with the low light. This technique is working from big to small. So I'm doing the big egg shape first of the head. And you want to keep it really nice gradations. You don't want too many lines in there. And also you use your photo as a reference a lot to copy values. to see how dark something should be or how light something should be. You look at your photo. But by painting this way in the beginning, you can get at it quicker. I'm going to paint in the shadow. using the shadow value. And like the ball, the shadow just sits there. The shadow says, I am sitting on this plane here. I'm not moving. You want the sense of light and the sense of shadow. You want to keep them separate. When picking out a photo reference to work from, it's really good to find a photo that has excellent light and shadow on it. 
That'll give you more three-dimensional form. If this was a picture and the light was coming straight at you, straight at the, the face, and there wasn't any shadow on it, it would be very flat. That looks good for pictures of women, pictures of babies, look good in that lighting, but it tends to be flat. This lighting that I'm working with, where there is light and shadow, it's called form lighting. Form lighting is where at least 75% of the portrait is in light and 25% is in shadow. And there are other lighting situations, front lighting where the lighting comes right at the front, back lighting where the lighting's behind it, rim lighting, which is very dramatic, where there's just a rim of light and the rest is in shadow. I'm still using the shadow, keeping it all the same value. Also, you want to keep the shadow edge fairly soft. You don't want the shadow to attract the eye. You want the light to attract the eye. Sharp edges attract, and soft edges, vague edges, don't attract. So if you don't want the person looking at your painting to look at the shadow, you want to keep it soft and vague. And I painted that shadow. Now I'm going to paint the shadow under the nose. And here where the shadow runs right up to the nose, it gets sharper. And then down here, where the shadow travels far from its point of origin, it's softer. So you keep it soft here and sharp up in here. There's only three major things, really, in painting. And they are color, value, and edges. Now, right now, I'm just dealing with value and edges. The color comes later. Once I paint this whole thing using these flesh tones, I will go in and glaze color on top of that to add local color. Redness of cheek, grayness of the beard. Red eyes. Now notice this nose, how I kept it a little lighter than the other shadows. His nose is kind of broad, so the light gets around it. It's not a sharp edge like that, it's more of a rounded edge. So the light gets around it, and it lightens it up a little bit. So you're, you're also sculpting while you're painting. I am just want to get in all the dark shadow areas. Really dealing with the big shapes here. I'm not dealing with the eyelashes or anything. Those will come later. It's a real process of big to small. And I'm going to go down to the nose here. This whole side of the nose that I did is, is just that. It's the side of the nose. I did the whole side as one unit. And when I do this side a little darker, I'll do that as one unit. Now I'm going to go over to the other eye and paint in the darkness there. It's really just a shape. can't think of it as an eyebrow. It's a matter of thinking it as this hard edge against this value, this soft edge against this value. It'll help you get at it, it'll help you paint.
if you think of it as eyebrow, you, you can't paint an eyebrow. You can only paint color, value, and edges. I'm going to move down to the mouth now and just paint a little shadow in the corners here. And then the other side. It's good to look at your photo and see how dark things are and how light things are. Does it need to be a little darker? Does it need to be a little lighter? Art is also a or painting is a matter of less or more. It either needs more light, less light, more shadow, more color, less color, harder edge. Now I'm going to go back into the onto the left side of his head and paint in the big side plane. going to paint the big side plane here using the low light. The head is like a box. You have a front, side, side, top, bottom. And you're really sculpting it. So I did the front here, now I'm painting the big side. And you'll see just by these minor things, or these quick things I should say, you'll achieve a lot of form in the very beginning of your painting. Now even though the ear may have little highlights and things in it, I'm not worrying about those. I'm just getting the overall value of it. The ear sits on the side plane, so it'll be the same value as that side plane. I'm just going to bring this value up, looking at my photo. Still dealing with low light. Now you might look at this and say, well, that may need to go a little darker. So then you would pick up your half tone and paint it in a little darker. I'm not going to paint the half tone in full strength. That would be too dark. So I'm just misting it in and creating a value somewhere between low light and half tone. Painting just the big side plane here. Getting the edge to turn more. Now since I have the half tone in my hand, I'm going to go over to the shadow side of the face and create the transition from the light into the shadow using the half tone. Bring it down. Some places the half tone is pretty wide. Other places, like this sharp edge here, the half tone is thin. Here it's wider. It's more gradual. It actually travels into the eye, into the socket a little bit. You'll find the darker values closer to the shadow side and the lighter values in the light. Nice transition, really big fades with the airbrush. And already you see you have a nice sense of form. I'm going to paint the neck now a little darker. It seems to be a little too light compared to the photograph. It helps when you're analyzing values to squint your eyes down a little bit. That'll eliminate color and other distractions. And it'll show you the big shapes and the big values. And then you could squint your eyes down and see what value it is. 
how light or dark it is. Again, I'm not worried about all these, this overspray here because I'm going to be spraying black around the whole background. Next, I'm going to go into the eyes and painting the sockets. Remember, it's big to small. I'm not going to paint the details of the eyes, just what they sit in inside of the sockets. The sockets are recessed in the skull, so they get darker. So I'm using my middle light here. It's before I painted this whole area in with the lightest light. So I'm just going one step darker to create the socket. So that the eye sits inside. It doesn't sit on the level before head. It goes in to the skull. And paint the whole thing. Everything sits inside. The whites of the eye, the iris, the pupil. It's all in the socket. Now I'm going to do, I have the front of the nose and the side of the nose. I'm going to paint the other side of the nose. Trying to echo this side with this side. Don't make it over too far this way. Don't make it too far over the other way. But just similar shape on the other side. Again, using the middle light. A little stronger. I'm going to go back to the half tone on the nose, the bottom of the nose, where this turns under. It's softer. There's a transition here between the light and the shadow. Now, since these paints are opaque, you can go over a darker paint with them. I can go over here and slowly bring out the underside of the nose and cast a little reflected light into it. Reflected light would be, this would be the initial light source, then the reflection would come back up and reflect into the shadow. It's not on the photo, but I like putting it in because it was sort of a weird shape there. So I'm just following that shape like this. I'm going to start painting some more uh, forms in the head. I'm going to work on the, around the mouth. The light's coming from this direction, and the mouth is on a, a, a teeth cylinder, it's called. It comes out and it goes around. Where it strikes first, it'll be lightest, and where it turns away, it'll be a little darker. So you can create that form using a darker value. I'm still using the half tone. Half tone's a good value to do all these little darker details with. If I was doing details up in the light, I'd use a lighter value. This would be too dark up there. You want everything relative. The, the, if, when I put a highlight up here, that'll be the lightest highlight. This will be a little less light and this will be less light still. You won't have white, white, and white, because light doesn't flow like that. It's lightest, middle light, low light. And the half tone holds that relationship as well. And definitely, you wouldn't want to put highlights near the shadow. I'm going to create a more nice transition on the side of the nose and the head needs a little more transition the forehead see I look at my reference photo and I see it needs to get a little darker moving over And that value, the halftone value I was working with, is a little too dark to bring over more. So I'm going to go to a middle light to darken this up. 
it's safer too. You can't get things too dark if you're using a light value. If you're using a dark value and you're trying to do little details, you can get them too dark. You'll punch holes into it with, with too dark of a value. It helps to know how to draw, too, at this point. Um, it's, the opaque projector is great for getting all the proportions down, but when you have other little things like where does this value end, you want to figure out where it is on the photo and translate it to the drawing. So you want to say, well, it looks like it ends sort of right of the left side of the eye. So you bring it up from there and you draw it up. You have to compare it to other parts of the face. It's all relative. Everything has to be in relationship to everything else. Now I'm going to go to the cheek areas. I'll do to the shadow side one first and bring out the muzzle form. The muzzle form wraps around the face like this. Everybody has it to some degree. Some people have it more than others, but it just wraps around, pulls up. I should mention first that I heat set the, the shirt before I started painting. If I didn't do that, there'd be a lot of pills catching all the paint. So I flattened it out. And sometimes I like to heat set it while I'm painting, in the middle of it, to flatten it all out again. Picked up the low light to bring out this side of the muzzle. Now I'll work on the chin form. Pick up my half tone again. And the chin again, that, like the, the mouth, it sticks out, it's round. The chin sticks out, it's round. The light hits it first up here, it'll be lighter. And as it turns around, it'll be darker. So you're really sculpting it out. Also, while I'm down here, I'll work on the underside, the underplane of the lip, where it cuts under, it cuts away from the light, so it gets darker. You can see how much form we're already getting. We haven't been working on it too long. I'm just going to shade in the underside of the lip. So that's like the underside of this. It gets darker, this gets darker, underside of the chin gets darker. Things that face away from the light get darker. Things that face towards the light get lighter. It's good to know where you're painting, what you're painting. Does it face the light? Does it face away from the light? Where is my light? So this, this thing here, I think it's called the philtrum, faces away from the light, this side, and the other side faces towards the light. So when I go back in with a lighter value, it'll bring out that form more. This little dimple faces away from the light on this side, the other side it faces towards the light. Looking at the photos, seeing if my values are right. I'm going back to the side plane, and I'm going to just sharpen up this edge a little more with a darker value. 
looking at my photo again. See what it looks like. I'm using the halftone value here to darken it up. When you mix these paints, it's nice to have a really good flesh tone and, and an average flesh tone. And by average, I mean not too red and not too yellow, right in the middle. If it was too red, it would look a little like clay. So if you're mixing it and you find you're getting a clay color, add a little more golden yellow to it. And if you're mixing it and you find it's looking a little greenish, add a little red to it. It can only go two ways with color. It can only go to the red or it can only go to the yellow. It could be too gray because you put in too much tinting black. So you'd want to add more color. It's either going to get grayer, redder, or more yellow. And the value is just a matter of being too light or too dark. To match values, I might want to mention this at this point, um, it would be good to get a value chart. I have a value chart here that I made myself to match the values against. You can buy these value charts at uh, local art stores or through arts magazines. They sometimes sell them. And what I did was I mixed the paint so that the value of this paint would match the value of that. The value of this paint would match the value of that. The, the color is still a flesh tone all the way through, but the value stays the same. Here I skipped a spot, and here I skipped a spot, and here I skipped a spot. I didn't need to, to make them all. It makes my job a little easier. Now I'll paint the ear. The ear is a little too light. It, since I said before it sits on the side plane, it should be the same value as that side plane. So I'll just darken it up. Considering it as a shape. One big shape. Also, another thing about working this way, these paintings carry. That means when someone sees them from a long distance, they'll be attracted to them because all the big values are right. Because it has a strong sense of light on it. Now I'm going to just start working on the detail here. Looking at my reference photo, copying the values. looking at the edges, being attentive to the edges, what exactly these shapes are. Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it come to a point? Bring these little wrinkles out. Now again, as the light comes from this direction, the eye is a ball inside the skull. So where the light hits first, it'll be lighter than the other side of the, the eyeball where it turns away from the light. So you can even hint at that by spraying in the darker value. And notice the height, well I haven't painted the highlight, but when I paint it in, it'll be on the side where the light's coming from. So if the light's coming from this side, the highlight will be on that side of the eye, not on the other side. That would be if the light was coming from that side. The eye also tends to get a little darker right in the corner here. That, this has a, a fleshiness, comes out more, catches more light. This really sits in. The muscles go in to that spot, so it can be a little darker. This method of painting is good for any, for any person, whatever their race are. If you were going to paint an African American, you wouldn't use 
lightest light, middle light, low light, you would start with middle light, low light, half tone. Or if, if the complexion is darker still, you would use low light, half tone, shadow, and dark shadow. The color stays the same. The value stays the same. But there's no difference. And then at the end, when you want to build up the color, i move over to the other eye now. In the end, when you want to build up the color, you can see local color changes. African Americans tend to get a little redder in complexion. So you'd want to work that in at the end. When you're also working on a picture of a man, like Patrick Stewart, you want to keep things kind of hard-edged. And if you were doing a picture of a woman, you want to keep things a little softer. Or a baby, you want to keep it softer. People don't like to see hard edges on their babies. Still matching the values, using my half tone, blending it. Not even using the half tone really full strength as a half tone. I'm using it as somewhere between the half tone and the low light. Now I'm just going to go back in and paint the pupils using gray. Excuse me. He has blue eyes, so they're sort of a gray blue. I like to paint the gray in first and then lightly glaze, lightly spray a little blue on top of that. If you just painted blue, it would be too strong of a color. And the gray makes the color a little weaker. So again, it's an object of less or more. More color, less color, more value, less value, lighter, darker. Now I'm going to move down to the mouth area again and bring out the crease on the light side of the nose, of uh, the mouth, by the nose. The light's coming from this side. This form turns away from the light. It gets darker where it turns away from the light. So I'm using my low light here. Don't want to get it too dark because it's, it's within a good deal of light. Turns away from the light. You want to see how, how gradually does it turn away. Where does it turn more? And there's, there's another plane that cuts through. It travels around the ear, and it cuts through the corner of the mouth like that. And I'm going to paint that one in. Now it's good to do the other side when you're working on a portrait to keep it even. So I'm going to grab a darker value because I'm on the darker side of the face, the half tone, and I'm going to paint in that same plane.
I'm going to go down to the mouth and get the edges a little sharper, a little more defined, a little too fuzzy. You want to get a little more definite. Again, still matching the values. And notice how this is darker on this side than on the other side, because the light is coming from that direction. It's a little darker than the surrounding area because it's cut, cutting under, but still it holds to the, the law or the rule of the way light flows. Up the chin a little more. Sharpen this edge up over here. These are really the details, too. Getting things more definite from a state of not being so defined. Now I have my middle light and I'm going to go into the lightest area of the head to paint in details. If you use anything darker than this, it'll be too dark, especially when you're working in the light area. Notice again, the light's coming from this direction, and this form turns away, gets slightly darker. Slide out a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the eye in the light side and bring out some more of the little details. Now I'm using low light so I don't get too dark here. And you, put, you can put in these really nice little details that aren't too dark. And you can spray it almost full strength. If I was using a darker value, it would be very difficult to put in these little details. Now move over to the other eye, still using the same value. See what I can do with that. Picking out more little details. Inside of the nose. Make that transition a little softer. I'm going to go back now with the shadow and bring it into the half tone a little bit. The edge is a little too sharp here. I want to soften it. So I just blend it out with the shadow value. This is where it gets to be a lot of fun. These are really nice transitions in here. You pull the shadow out a little bit. Pull the shadow out a little bit. It's kind of hard edge right here, so you want to hold that edge. 
and then it hits uh, more fleshier form and it gets softer. It's all very soft down here. Until it hits the chin, which gets kind of hard. The shadow pulls up underneath the chin, so I want to darken that up. And also, seems to be a little bit on this side, just far enough away from the light that it casts a shadow over there. And again, with this, the closer it is to the form, the sharper it'll be. So you want to hold that edge there, and then as it goes away, it gets softer and softer, because light starts trickling in. And I'm going to go move up to the head and soften that up. And notice how much form I'm getting. I haven't used any other color than these values. And to get the lifelike skin tone is, of course, the right application of value, but also putting the right local color in. And by local color, I mean the redness of the cheeks, gray chin. Now I'm going to paint in a black background. I start right up to the edge and then bring the black out from there. And I like to point my airbrush away from the edges so that the overspray now sprays this way and not into the face. So if I'm working on the other side, I would point the airbrush the other way. And also at this point, I'm thinking whether or not I want a hard edge or a soft edge. I'm going to hold this edge a little bit, this chin edge, because it's in front of this neck edge. And the neck, I want to be a little more vague. That'll make it go back. So now it sits behind the face. Same with the ear edge that sits behind the face here. So I'm going to soften that a little bit. Just right where it connects. Rather than having it hard, hard, it's hard and then soft. And again here, the same thing. Now go to the other side and paint in that background. This stage is very important to be attentive to the, the, the outside shape of the portrait. You don't want to think, well, I'm working on the background now, I can look away. This is easy. You want to get what that, sh that outside shape looks like. Where does this line turn to this line? Is it up here? Is it close to the ear? Is it down? What's, what's longer, what's shorter? Is this longer? Is this longer? You have to compare things when you're drawing to other things that, that are already there. You know the bottom of the ear is here, so how far away is this from the bottom of the ear?
since the background is going to take a while, I'm going to paint it off camera. But when it's all done, I'll show you how I connect the background to the foreground through the use of hard edges and soft edges. Now I'm going to blend the portrait of the face into the background. This edge here is a little too sharp and I want it to be a little softer so that there's a sense of air around it and a sense of three-dimensionality. If the edge is too sharp, it'll look like it was cut out of paper and pasted on. If you want it to exist in space. So I have my dark shadow now, which is darker than this shadow, just to blend the edge into the background. Just to soften the edge. It's good to keep the shadow side soft. I may have mentioned that before, but it's very important because you don't want it to attract attract the viewer's eye. Darken the shadow a little bit. Now separate the chin from the neck by making this a little darker under here. Now I don't have a color in the background, but if I did, sometimes I like to take the background color and just lightly mist it into the shadow. That gives a sense of, of air. If there's a little background color reflected into the shadow. Whatever the, the color may be, you can reflect them all in. Now at this point I'm picking out details in the shadow. Again, not too much. You want, mostly, you want the attention to be in the light. So you don't want to over detail the shadow. You can even really blur parts. Get them really soft. Now since I'm working with the edge, I'm going to go over to the other side now and do the same thing. We'll see if the halftone's dark enough to do it. You can really just blend out the light. This side you want to keep a little harder edge than that side, but you still want it to be soft enough so that it goes around. And since the ear is further back than the head there, you want it to be a little softer. Everything's in relationship. If you're looking here, you want this to be harder edge so that things in your peripheral vision look softer. Everything can look hard in a photograph, but that's not how we see. If we're looking at the center of the head, that's where the focus will be. And then the areas in our peripheral vision will be much softer. Now I'm going to go into the eye on the shadow side and darken up some areas with the dark shadow just to get the shadow a little richer, a little darker. I'm 
Now underneath the nose to separate the nose from the front of the face. Get a little darker. And lighter as it moves down away from the initial point. Now it's just little details around the face. Things get darker. And notice how I haven't used any black except for the background at this point. The portrait seems very clean looking because you're not because I'm not using a lot of black and white in it working back and forth I'm just using these nice flesh tone values for everything I'll go in with a little black later but and white but I'll use it very sparingly look for where really darks are when you're using this dark shadow value don't put it in areas where it's where it's light. A little dark over here on the ear. Now I'll move back over to the other eye. Just putting it in the darkest spots. Feather it out for these little details. I'm casting a shadow from the eye, uh, the eyelid onto the eyeball. And I'll do that on the other side. I'm gonna just darken up the shadow on the temple side here. Notice how this edge is very hard compared to this head edge, which is very soft. You want to be conscious of all that when you're painting. I'm going to go back down to the mouth and work on the lips a little bit with this value. Looking at the shape, of what I'm painting. Is it triangular? Is it oval? What is it? And trying to copy it as best I can. Now right on the inside where I'm working, right before we enter the mouth, it gets darker because not much light can reach that area. I'm just going to darken up little areas as I see they need darkening. It tends to get darker in the corners of the mouth around that area because it, the, the flesh goes in as it travels towards the teeth. That sort of glues the mouth down onto the glues the lips down onto the onto the face. I'm gonna go down to the chin and just soften, work on these edges a little bit. I'm going to go, now I'm going to go in with a little black on the face. The black I call the accent, and it should be used like that, just little accents where no light reaches. Like under the nose here, very sparingly, in the corner of the mouth. 
since this mouth is on the light side of the face and this mouth is closer to the sh shadow side, this gets darker. This may not be as dark, and I don't think I'll spray any black in there. And deepen this up a little bit in the eye, the pupil. For the pupil, I just point the airbrush and just spray, and it creates a circle on its own. And then remember how I mentioned before, this area tends to be the darkest area in the eye socket. I'll spray this in here. Sets that back. And I'll go to the other eye and put the people in. Now I'll go down to the chin and just put a little accent in there, just to separate the face more from the neck. Now the paints I'm using are Createx, but you can really use whatever paints you want, as long as you're able to mix good values, good colors. Some other paints you could try are Deca, Aquaflow, the Badger Aeropake, the Yurk brand Comart, or the Salus International Reditex. Just darkening up the shadow a little bit. Get it to become more into the background. Another way to think about painting is what's foreground and what's background. This whole face in the light can be considered foreground. You want that to attract. Everything else could be considered background. Obviously this is background, but you can even consider the shadow to be background. You don't want it to attract. You want it to be soft. You want it to become part of the background. The, the shirt you want to become part of the background. Now, after I just cleaned out my airbrush really well, I'm going to start going back in with lighter values to bring out some of the forms. Make sure your airbrush is really clean, and then test it first, because you don't want to have mud come out on your painting and ruin it. I have my highlight value in here now. Very light. And I'm spraying fairly heavy, just to bring out the light. I'm going to travel down the face to the nose and lighten that up a little bit. And notice how I'm going across the nose like this and across the forms. That brings out more form than if you go down the form. Actually traversing the form. Now after you lay down this value, you can go back in with white and lighten it up even more. I'm going to move over to the eye in the light, closest to the light, and bring out the light a little more. And there's a hard edge around the socket here. I'm going to hold that. And bring the light down. And then I'm copying the photograph, seeing where the light is. I'm going to spray the light on the other side now, but not as light as this side, because this side's closer to the shadow. It'll be a little, a little less strong. Now on the mouth, or on the teeth cylinder, remember how I said it curves around? This side goes in, this side faces the light. This would be a top plane. That faces up, faces the light. So you bring that out.
And then this, again, faces the light. It's lighter. So really, I'm just painting planes that face the light, painting them lighter. The bottom lip faces up. It's lighter. The top of the chin faces up. It's lighter. Now I'm painting all these in with this highlight value, but I'm going to go back and paint this in with white so this is the strongest light. And I might knock this down a little bit if it gets too light. Because I want it all to be in relationship to the lightest light, middle light, low light. So things up here are lighter than things down here. Always holding that relationship. Just a little light catches on the sockets. Now I might want to bring out the whites of the eyes with this value. I wouldn't use white because the eyes are recessed in the socket. If anything, it would be a light gray. But this value is fine. Now over to the other eye. And this wouldn't be as white as the other eye, because it's further away from the light. This would be the lightest part. Cleaned my airbrush out really well again, and I'm going to go back in with white. Bring out, make this the brightest spot where the light strikes first. Don't go up really close and paint it in. You want to apply it and dry it. If you go up really close and try to make it white, it'll just soak right in and make a big mess. This is what really attracts the eye, this brightest spot of light. Someone standing 30 feet away would be really attracted to that strength. Down to the nose. Bring out a highlight. Top plane. Highlight. Top plane of the wing of the nose. To lighten that up a little bit. See the way this top plane is a little lighter? This top plane would be a little lighter. Reflection in the lips. Highlight. Just going to go in with a shadow value and just darken up a little thing, a little more things, some more things before I start to add the color. Just little details I want to get. Want to get the ear a little more detailed. Doesn't have to be overly detailed because you don't want it to compete with the with the face and the eyes.
I'm go, going to go back to the eye. Just darken that up a little bit. Darken up the eyebrow from the overspray. Then maybe put a little detail in the hairs. Using quick dagger strokes. Hopefully you know what a dagger stroke is. If you don't, go to an airbrush getaway. You'll be practicing them all the time. You really can't do this without it. Now I'll move over to the other eyebrow. Little details. To finish off the eyes, I'm going in with the shadow value just to sharpen the focus up a little bit. This is where you want the focus to be. So you want to think about having your sharp edges around the eyes. So it's getting the airbrush very close to the board, creating a sharp edge and then fading it out. I'll go over to the other eye and do the same. It's a little too fuzzy right here, so I'm just going to sharpen that up. Hold the edge. Same thing under here. And I might want to look at my portrait now and see what edges need to be held. It's a balance between hard edge and soft edge. It's nice to have some of each. But you should decide what, what are you going to have more of. Are you going to have more hard edges or are you going to have more soft edges? Hard edge, hold the edge. Hard edge. Hard edge here. Now go down underneath the chin, hold that edge. Still using the shadow value, but I'm using it as if I'm spraying a half tone. I'm spraying it lightly. Just showing you that you can use any of these values if you if you miss them in with the airbrush, they can take on a different value. Hold that edge. I'm misting it very lightly there. So even if you can't match the values exactly right, if you understand the principle of the light and the way it flows over the form, you can paint it with whatever values you have. Now that I have the values set pretty well, I'm going to glaze color on top of it. And places to look for color would be, as I mentioned before, the redness of the cheek, lips, grayness of the chin. So I have red up. It's transparent red. So I'm just going to really mist it lightly over the value that I've already created just to add color. Now this photo seems to be red all over. Up into the forehead. You can pull the red up into there. And it's, you can see now how it's starting to look more like flesh. So you have the form created, and now you create the skin. 
or at least the color of skin. Move back up here, add a little more red to the cheeks. The ears tend to get much more redder. Where the skin is pushed close to the surface and the capillaries show through, that's where it gets a little redder. Sometimes I like to just go straight across, tie it all together, just for the light with the red. Depending on the complexion, of course. I also like to make my shadows a little transparent. So I like to spray some red into them, make them glow a little bit. That is, of course, unless there was a blue background, I would spray a little blue into it to add the feeling of space. But it's nice to have a nice, rich, transparent shadow. Under here, too. In the lips. More red. Just hazing it on. Maybe some pink in the corner of the eyes. Corner of this eye. Now another way to go is to make things weaker. And that, I glaze gray on top of them. Notice around the mouth and chin area on men in particular tends to get a little grayer. So I just missed a little gray. Gray also pushes things back. If you want, the, you want strong light and color in the foreground and you want something to push back like the neck, you can spray a little gray over it. And that pushes it back. Strong color attracts, weak color doesn't. So in that sense, you can now sculpt it even more, creating more depth to the side plane by adding a little gray to it. That'll turn the form even more than just the value alone. Again, value is worth 80% of the form. Color and edges are the other 20%. So this color change it's actually called a chroma change. Chroma is the strength of a color. It's either a strong red or it's a very weak, grayed out red. The weak color makes things go back. I'll do the same up for his head. Make the color a little weaker, where I want things to turn away. up in his head again. I'm spraying pretty broadly here, just getting the big areas of weak color. Clean my airbrush out well again. And go on with the final touches. The highlight in the eye.
and the highlights inside. And when the light strikes this side, the highlight's on that side of the eye. But since the eye is translucent or transparent, the light travels through the eye and glows on the other side. So I'll spray in a little white on the other side and glaze over that with blue in the end. More highlights. Bring up the light a little more. Highlights on the lip. Now just add the little blue in the eye. Here's the finished piece. As you can see, it contains all the principles that we've been discussing throughout this presentation. The light strikes here first, it's the lightest, it flows over the form, it gets dimmer as it goes around the form until it turns into shadow. Planes that face the light are lighter, planes that face away from the light are darker. You should stick with this value system. It, it, it is solid art knowledge and it is indispensable if you want to know how to paint. I uh, strongly advise you, you practice it and you work on it because through that you'll be able to do great things with it. You'll, if you know the value of something, you'll be able to paint it. Something else you should uh, consider uh, I strongly recommend subscribing to Airbrush Action Magazine to keep up with airbrushing and also attend an airbrush getaway. Very important for that. Uh, the top talent in the world comes to that and teaches at that. Thanks for watching.